Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part two of my extract an OLE image from your database. And if you haven't watched part one yet, go watch that first. You'll find a link down below and then come on back. All right, so let me show you what we're going to do now that we have the images in the database. This is what we're going to do. I'll do it manually by hand first, and then we'll do it with a little automation. So the first thing is open up Microsoft Paint. Now, it should be on your computer if you're using Windows, which if you're running Access, you are. All right, it should be under Start. Now, mine's right here. If not, just type in P-A-I-N-T, and Paint should show up right there. And that's going to open this guy. Now, I've already got my image nice and small, but usually when you when you start this, this, this palette, this, uh, this background here is really huge. So what you want to do is you want to shrink this down, find the edges. You might have to scroll, right? If, if your window's smaller like this, you might have to scroll up and down, find the edges, bring this thing in nice and small, like postage stamp size, smaller than any image in your database is going to be. Okay. And then just put some, something dumb in here and save it. I don't care what you save it as, save it as junk, whatever. The reason why is because we want this to be our default palette size, because we're going to come in here and hit paste, and that's going to expand that palette size to the exact size of whatever image we drop into it. All right, ready? Close this. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to click on Spock, copy, control C. Spock is now on the clipboard. Okay, now we're going to open up paint again and hit paste, control V. Boom, there he is. See how it resized the palette for you. Okay, now we're going to save Spock. Now, we're not just going to use Control S because that's going to save it usually as, a, as a, a, a PNG file. And there's no easy way to set what the default file setting is in Paint. At least I haven't found it. So I'm just going to use the keyboard. And this is what we're going to mimic with Send Keys. It's going to be Alt F to open up the file menu. Down, 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 down. Right. Down, down. You can save it either as a bitmap or a, or a GIF or a JPEG, whatever you want. Um, I'm, let's go JPEG. I think JPEGs work best. All right, so once you've done that, press enter. Okay, now you gotta type in the file name. Now I'm gonna send it the, the whole path to where I want it to go, but just for now, just for demonstration purposes, I'll just type in Spock. It's going in my My Drive folder, that's fine. All right, press enter, and now it's been saved to the hard drive. Now I can close Paint, Alt F4. Okay, and now I'm back to my database. And then I would just continue on with the next record. Go to the next record, Oop, do the same thing. Let's have access do this automatically okay how are we gonna do that well let's go back to here all right let's repurpose this button as saving this guy right right click design view and i'm going to change this button to extract image like that all right move it over here in the middle come on there you go all right let's open up its properties let's change this to extract button and let's see what we got in here. I know we got some other code in here that we can probably get rid of. Right click, build event. All right, yeah, I got rid of these other two buttons. That's just to open up the orders and the contacts. We can get rid of that. I don't like a cluttered VBA window. Okay, so what we wanna do is take that image and do what we just did by hand only with VB code. So the first thing is to set the focus on that field. And the field's called profile picture. So we're gonna say profile picture dot set focus that moves the focus from the button up to where that image is. Okay, so now the cursor, basically the, the focus is sitting on that picture. Now we're gonna copy whatever is there to the clipboard and that is do command dot run command ACCMD copy. All right, that's just gotta know the, the command, that's what it is, okay? Now, before we actually save it, let's put the file name in a variable. Okay, let's come up here and I'm gonna say dim file name as a string. Okay, and then down here, I'm gonna say file name equals, let's put the full path to our database folder in here first, which if I go back to my folder, here it is, there's the, there's the full path right there. I'm gonna copy that, right? See users, Amicron, desktop, new DB, whatever you wanna put it. You can even make an images folder in here and put it in there, whatever you wanna do. Actually, yeah, let's do that. Let's put an images folder in here. New folder, we'll call it images. We'll put all of our images in here. And now we can copy that. Copy. All right, let's come back over here. The file name is going to be that. And then let's base this file name on something for the record. How about the customer ID, right? 
So let's call this pick dash and customer ID. So it's one, two, three, four, whatever. And, and we're going to save them as JPEGs. Okay, so that's our file name. Now, let's delete the file name. Delete the file if it's there. Now, I don't want to go through. Yeah, you can go through and check to see if it's there with a the dirt command and all that. So, but the easiest way to do this is to just delete it, whether it's there or not. But if it's not there, then access will generate an error, which I don't want to see. So we're just going to temporarily turn error handling off on error resume next. And I got a whole separate video on that. I'll put a link down below. I also have a whole separate video on variable declaration, which I will also put a link to that down below. Sometimes I get going in these videos and I forget to, okay, maybe you got to go watch this first. I always forget to put stuff in the prerequisites half the time I go back, which I might go back now and, <laughs> and put them in there at the front of the video, which by this point you've already seen. Okay. All right. So we're going to turn off error handling. We're going to say kill file name. Be very careful with that. It'll try to delete it and it'll ignore the error. And then we're going to turn error handling back on, on error Go to zero is how you turn error handling back on. All right. We want to, normally we want to see errors because if something's not right in our code, I want to see it as a developer, especially. All right. Now, by the time you push this to your end users, you should have all those errors handled, but you always got error handling is something you always have to take into consideration. But for this example, I know that's going to throw an error if that file doesn't exist, which is going to happen the first time you do this, right? That only comes into play like the second, third time you do it. Okay, now we're gonna open up paint. Okay, how do we do that? We use the shell command. I've covered this in several other videos, but the shell, I, I don't have a video for the shell command itself. I know I cover it in a couple of my lessons, but it's real simple. It just opens up, it launches another program. All right, so we're gonna shell. It's mspaint.exe. Now we don't need the full path and file name to that because the folder that's in is in our Windows path. So we can just say shell mspaint.exe. That's our paint application. Okay, and they also want to say comma VB normal focused. We don't want it minimized. We don't want to maximize. We want it normal, which is a normal window, and we want to give it focus. So it's in the foreground. Okay. All right. And yeah, I'm going to do a whole separate video on shell eventually. It's one of those programs that you're going to use occasionally or commands, excuse me, that you're going to use it occasionally, but not all the time. So it's not really critical that I made a video on it. I know I covered it a bunch. Now, here's the point at which we have to wait. Because depending on the speed of your computer, this can take a second, three seconds, whatever to load. So you kind of got to, you have to gauge this based on your machine. Okay. I got a relatively fast new computer. So I'm going to pause here for, well, let me say one second. Okay. Now I believe I already have the sleep function in my global module. Yep, I do. I got sleep seconds, which is for whole seconds, or you can just use sleep to sleep milliseconds. Okay. I covered this in that sleep video that I told you to watch the last time and back to my code. So here's where I'm going to sleep. All right, let me go back to here. I'm going to say, uh, let's try sleep 1000. Just give me a one second sleep there and wait for paint to load. Okay. Now, once it loads, we're going to do a bunch of send keys. All right, so we're going to paste the image. That's going to be send keys. What is uh, control V. It's going to look like this. Control. It's the caret. It's on the it's the, on the six key, right? Control V. Make sure that's a lowercase V. If not, you're going to get Control Shift V. I run into that myself. <laughs> All right. Send keys. Control V. And then you optionally you can say wait here, but it generally always waits anyways. That's only for like really long strings. You got to worry about that. All right. So now we've pasted our image in. And let's stop here and take a look and see what we got so far. Let's just make sure that what we have here is working, right? It should open up paint, wait a second, and paste that image in, right? All right, I'm going to save it. Always good to throw in a debug compile. All right, let's close this, come back out here, close this, back into our customer form, click the button, and there you go. It opened up paint, and it pasted Spock in there. Okay, now we're ready to save the image and we'll talk about that in part three now today's mon or today's friday i'm recording this on monday but this is being released on friday april 19 2024 so this will be part three will be released on monday the 22nd so tune in monday same bad time same bad chat yeah i know it says tomorrow but they didn't i don't think batman used to ever they don't they didn't uh they didn't cliffhang over the weekends at all 
I don't think so. That was like the famous saying, right? Tune in tomorrow. Same bad time. Same bad chant, right? Remember that? <laughs> I'm old. I remember that. Uh, but if you remember, you can watch it right now because I'm going to keep recording and I'll, I'll have it for you in a few minutes. So. so there you go. We're getting there. That's the end of part two. That's your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you Monday for part three. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have below. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. Click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Want to learn more? Click the show more link below the video to find additional resources and links. YouTube does a pretty good job of hiding it. It's right down there. See this part of the description here, right? The name, the videos up here. There's a little show more down there, right down the bottom. It's kind of hard to find. But once you click on that, you'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. And YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted like they used to do. But if you'd like to get an email every time I post a new video, click on the link to join my mailing list. And you can pick how frequently to get emails from me, either as they happen daily, weekly, or monthly. Now, if you'd like to become a paid member of my channel and receive all kinds of awesome perks, click on the join button. You'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks, including my extended cut videos, access to my code vault, lots of VBA source code in there, template downloads, and lots more. I'll talk more about these perks at the end of the video. Even if you don't want to commit to becoming a paid member, and you'd like to help support my work, please feel free to click on the tip jar link. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got some puppies to feed. But don't worry, no matter what, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more and they'll always be free. Now, if you really want to learn access and you haven't tried my free access level one course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, and more. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? The whole thing, free, four hours, go watch it. And okay, okay, a lot of you have told me that you don't have time to sit through a four hour course. So I do now have a quicker Microsoft Access for Beginners video that covers all the basics faster in about 30 minutes. And no, I didn't just put the video on fast forward, <laughs> but I'll put a link to this down below as well. Now, if you like level one, level two is just a dollar. That's it, one dollar. And that's another whole like 90 minute course. Level two is also free for paid members of any level, including supporters. So if you're a member, go watch level two, it's free. Okay, want to get your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page and send me your question there. Members get priority, of course. While I do try to read and respond to all of the comments posted below in the comments section, I only have time to go through them briefly a couple of times a month, and sometimes I get thousands of them. So send me your question here on the tech help page, and you'll have a better chance of getting it answered. And while you're on my website, be sure to stop by my Access Forum. We've got lots of lively conversations about Microsoft Access and other topics. I have a fantastic group of moderators who help me answer questions. Shout out to Alex, Kevin, Scott, Adam, John, Dan, Juan, and everybody else who helps out on the site. I appreciate everything you do. I couldn't do it without you. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course on YouTube. Yeah, I'm on Facebook too, but I don't like Facebook. Don't get me started. Now, let's talk more about those member perks. If you do decide to join as a paid member, there are different levels, silver, gold, platinum, and diamond. Silver members and up get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class every month, and some other perks. Gold members, Get all the previous perks, plus access to download the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, 
plus access to my code vault where I keep tons of different functions that I use, the code that I build in most of the videos. You'll also get higher priority if you do submit any tech help questions. Now answers are never guaranteed, but you do go higher in the list for me to read them. And if I like your question, you got a good chance of it being answered. You'll also get one free expert level class each month after you've finished the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks plus even higher priority for tech help questions. You get access to all of my full beginner level courses for every subject. And I cover lots of different subjects like Word, Excel, VBA, ASP, lots of different stuff, not just access. These are the full length courses found on my website. You get all the beginner ones. In addition, once you finish the expert classes, you get one free developer class per month. So lots of training. And finally, you can also become a diamond sponsor. You'll have your name or your company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown on each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you again soon.